football. Unbelievable uh, stuff at Miller Park last night. We've talked about the catch already, but now we raise our game and bring in Mike Littlewood, who is uh, bringing his A game to the set once again and uh, <laughs> joining us for his weekly segment. Kay, are you ready to be harassed again, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. All right. We'll, we'll, start, we'll start with this. You took over my play-by-play duties last night for a little bit. <laughs> is this are you, is this a trend that's going to continue? Hey, you never know what's going to happen after baseball, so I'm just trying to trying to get it going quick. <laughs> the, I just wanted to fill the gap. There, there's yeah. a moment where Spencer is wondering, was that and the pitch and there was that a strike? Yeah, the pitch was. I was wondering if the catcher caught it. It was tip. It was barely tipped. Yeah. But I was like, did it end up in the mitt? Meanwhile, you're talking <laughs> to Coach Littlewood, and you jumped in to help Spencer assist. For, yeah, I think I was just trying. To, in fact, I didn't. I didn't really want to go here this early, um, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it. Since you told me you gave me a yellow card the other day, uh, I'm, I'm, the I'm, yeah, pitch, I'm going to go there right now. Wow! <laughs> Whoa! Hey! He's back. Hey, this is actually this has actually been worn on a court. Uh, <laughs> you guys probably bought this medium. So. I think uh, I think I'm gonna go right here with you. Wow! Oh, <laughs> Red, you're out. So, you're, you're gone. Right this this show and the next show. Uh, I would say yeah. And if you need a wow. fill in, you know where to get one because <laughs> I helped him out last, you last night. night. Yeah. This is a oh, Schmedium. Yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> you and Phil Mickelson have the same size. Yeah, exactly. So. I accept your red card wholeheartedly. Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> Michael, because it's you, it's you and I, the rest of I got a, I got an hour. Ma- a man of many talents. There we go. Uh, also, how many how many Sweet Sixteens did you officiate, by the way? Uh, two or three, uh, and I stood by in a, an Elite Eight and worked an Elite Eight. I think I worked two Sweet Sixteens and then I worked a, an Elite Eight. So were you close to a Final cool. Four? You know, they told me I, I was. And in fact, I think I was going to be a standby my last year. Um, but it was close. I mean, you never know on that. It's the same group of guys every year. They don't want to. They don't want those guys to screw up on in the Final Four. That's a big stage, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's hard to not go after you when, when you're sitting in a rep. Yeah, you better be. Hey, rep! Hey, hey! <laughs> See, I don't even. Baloney! I don't even notice that anymore. It's just like it's happened to me all my life. <laughs> it just goes in in one ear and out the other. Well, you're a man of many talents now. You refereed Sweet Sixteens, Elite Eights. Uh, you want to take over my play-by-play gig? You're giving out red cards, and you're the baseball coach at BYU. There we go. It's a fun day, man. Settle down over there, okay? <laughs> Just getting cocky. Last night you beat UVU 15 to six. 15 runs. You throw nine pitchers. What was the point of throwing nine different pitchers last night? Yeah, that was a plan going in. We wanted to uh, get Jeff Barker, who I took out of the starting weekend rotation this week, uh, but he has a the potential of starting Saturday, depending on how we use Mike Rucker in the first two games. And so I, I wanted to throw him two innings so he'll be available. And then I wanted simply to get every single one of our, the guys in our pen work. Brandon Kinzer was the only starter who threw, and his his he's going to start Friday night. Oh, what um, an inning he had, by the way. Yeah, it was simple. He said he was going to throw five pitches. He ended up throwing nine. Uh, but he still got the – Ralph Zobel gave him the win, which was nice of Ralph. But he threw a <laughs> – he threw a very efficient inning. He, I mean, it, more efficient than anybody else, and I think that's probably why Ralph did that, and I was on the same page with him. But that's what I want to do, get all of our relievers an inning um, and give them some confidence. A lot of them haven't been on the field in a live situation. Last night, great crowd. I mean, uh, and I, I tweeted out that uh, appreciate all those people who came out. It was, a, it was an awesome crowd. I don't know. It seemed like about 1,500. I'm yeah, not sure what it was. That. But uh, to have our relievers – Throw in that situation under those circumstances in a live game is is so much different than throwing a bullpen or throwing in, in practice. So that's that was one of the things I really wanted to get accomplished last night. Besides the W, like we talked about. Let's talk about the catch. Uh, at the time you're down, uh, but Kate Andrus with an unbelievable grab. What do you see on that would be Colton Shaver three run homer? Yeah, Colton actually got jammed on it, so the ball was really really high. I mean, it came down at a a, a steep angle and uh, Cade did a great job of going back you see it right here and I was hoping his glove would fall off and go behind the fence because <laughs> that was our only chance because I knew he had a beat on it it was a great catch um, like I told you guys it was the most de- depressing great catch I've ever seen in my life and you could feel the air go out of our dugout just a little bit but uh, fortunately Parker Starr picked us up and, and got a big two run uh, or three run double uh, that I thought was the key at bat of the game last night. You let Colton Mahoney throw 141 pitches. God, that's what I saved this for. Dang it. (laughs) I still have this one. (laughs) I've already been thrown out of the game. Technically, I shouldn't even ask this question. How are you still here? Okay, 141 pitches. 
Now, we were wondering if he has, like, titanium arm or adamantium Let's in hope. his bone or something <laughs> like that. But really an unbelievable performance. How comfortable are you letting him go that deep uh, throwing that many pitches? Yeah, this time of year, we felt pretty good. It's, it, it's not as much this time of year pitch count as it is subjectively looking at him, talking to JT, our pitching coach, Jeremy Thomas. And then talking to Colton every inning, um, they'll let you know. And even if they even if they try to trick you and say, "Yeah, I feel great," you can tell by just their stuff. And Colton looked looked sharp. And you look at efficiency on the efficiency scale. He he was probably a D minus in that game. On the strikeout scale, he was an A plus. Uh, 141 pitches in seven innings. Um, you look at Sonny Gray, who threw 95 pitches in nine innings, or eight and two thirds, or whatever he threw the other day. Those are the different. You know, those, that's the difference. We want to get Colton to where he's efficient. He had a lot of three ball counts, a lot of full. Shooty had like three three batters that went yeah. 11 or 12 or 13 pitch at bats, and so they'll just run your pitch count up. I don't look at those as really stressful stressful pitches because he was just fastball, fastball, fastball. When there's bases loaded. And it's a two-two count. I mean, those are very stressful pitches. And whether people believe in in uh, you know like high stakes pitches or stressful pitches, I I kind of am a believer in that. And if he throws 141 stressful pitches, he doesn't look like he did in the seventh inning. He he was really really sharp. And so we don't want to run him out there 141 pitches every game, obviously. And I hope he doesn't ha doesn't do that. I hope he's more around the zone um, in the future. But I f we feel pretty comfortable with him being able to come back. He says his arm feels good right now. So, Can you tell when a pitcher's lying? You can. I mean, you can kind of see through that. Um, really, you can tell they're lying by, by what they're doing before that. I mean, if they're walking guys and their velocity's down and they can't locate – and you go out there and say, how you feel? Feel great. Oh, I'm great. No, you don't. <laughs> Is anyone like, I feel terrible. Next give guy. me out of here. Yeah, give me the lefty. Uh, <laughs> Bring him in. <laughs> yeah. And that decision is probably made before I even get out there most of the time. Some veterans, like if Colton told me, I feel good, let me get this guy, I'd probably let him let him go. But hopefully those guys are, like I know Brandon Kinser and Jeff Barker and Mike Rucker and, and Colton Mahoney, those starters, they would be honest with me, say, yeah, I, you know, I, I could get this guy if you need me to. And then that that's my cue to go to the next guy. So you can kind of tell just their personality and, uh, you know, just knowing them a little bit. Is there a bad liar, one of your pitchers? You're like, no, yeah, I can, I can see, man. Not on the field. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe some off the field stuff. <laughs> <laughs> on the field, you can read through them. You're on the base pass as well, directing traffic at third base, and you obviously go to the mound and have conversations. What's uh, one of the funnier conversations you've had while being on a mound or at third base in an in-game scenario? Well, I mean, I don't know if they're funny or not, but I, I sometimes I get really frustrated or upset when pitchers can't throw strikes. And uh, like BK, uh, Brandon Kinser at USD, we kind of laughed about it after. So Jeff Barker struggled on, uh, on Friday night. And, uh, you know, I went and pat him on the back. I said, hey, there will be better days, you know, and he ran off. And then it kind of built up and built up and built up. And I was like up to here frustration-wise. And BK came out and couldn't throw a strike. And I'm, I'm kind of cursing him as I'm going out to the mound and just under my breath. And I get out there and I go, 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 get off the field like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so he kind of smiles as he's walking off. And I said, BK, what I – because I can't remember exactly what I said. And I said, BK, what I, what I say when I – Told you to get off the mound. He goes, you just told me to go, 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 get in the dugout. So those are, you know, they're funny to me after the fact. And yeah. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's just get the pitcher, get the ball, and get him out of there, and let's get to the next guy. So, What's the key to uh, winning the series at LMU this weekend? It, just like it is every week, good starting pitching. Um, they're, they're, uh, they've got a top four guys in their lineup are very good. Colin Wellman, their starting pitcher uh, Thursday night's a USA collegiate guy. I mean, he's really good. And then they have a couple of good arms after that. But if we can get good starting pitching, that's the key to us. So we don't have to go. We've got a couple guys hurt in the pen, and we don't have much pen depth. But the guys you saw last night, I mean, we, the guys coming out of the pen have good stuff. We have to get six, seven, eight innings out of our starters. We really have to do that, hopefully without throwing 140, 150 pitches because we don't like to do that a whole lot. But that's going to be the key, playing catch, getting key hitting. Um, that Really, those three things are always, always key for us. Playing three of the top four teams in the West Coast Conference uh, early in the season, do you, do you like the way that the schedule is shaped up, or would you prefer to have, you know, LMU and Pepperdine and San Diego a little bit further apart? You know, I think it's okay. Uh, we play five five series on the road out of our nine series, and then it just it kind of switches next year. So you look at the coaches' polls: Gonzaga, Pepperdine, um, San Diego, and then now Loyola, four of the top five in the first five weeks. 
And so if we can if we can win this series, we're looking great. I mean, it looks really good for us. Of course, we didn't. It was it was bad news to to get swept by San Diego, but we do have an opportunity right now to to. It, it's kind of like destiny is right in front of us and in our own hands. We can control it, as they say. And but it's gonna. Be, this will be a tough one. Uh, we, traditionally, we we beaten uh, LMU two out of three the last couple of years. Uh, it's a team we play well against, so you know, hoping for the best. The people that are just tuning in are like, "Why the heck is Mike Littlewood <laughs> in a ref jersey?" I should put this back on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to watch the whole interview. <laughs> yeah. Go back and watch it on demand. Uh, I'm running a four nine forty tomorrow, Coach. Yeah, I doubt that, but I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm pulling for you. <laughs> I don't know what that honestly. We we in baseball we run the sixty yard dash, and okay. so I don't know what that is equivalent of. I, I'm thinking it might be. I don't know, it's 6'5", 6'6", 60. And, um, what does Brennan Lund run? He's your fastest guy, right? Brennan Lund runs a, his best time is a 6'3'9", which is probably top 5% in, in America. Mm. But a middle infielder, you want him to run 6'8", 6'6", 6'8". What about a DH? Um, DH is like, well, Colton Shaver probably runs a 7'9". So okay, there you go. <laughs> I'd, I'd put you somewhere in between those. 7'9", 60. Yeah, you'll, you would beat Colton Shaver, I'll, I'll tell you that. Maybe Cole Willstead. You'll beat both those guys. I yeah, appreciate that boost of confidence, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> I'm pulling for you, though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the red card. <laughs> Not really, though. Uh, no, but, but serious, thanks for the time in the studio. We wish you the best Absolutely. of luck at LMU. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Mike Littlewood on